The following video is going to walk you through how to determine whether something is moral or immoral. You want to take notes on the most basic points. If I'm going too fast, press pause. We're going to be using this formula throughout the rest of the semester. So there are three parts to any human act. The object, the intention, and the circumstances. So these aspects, these three different components, help us to determine whether something is moral or immoral, and then how responsible we want to hold the person as a result of their act. The first part of any object, any action, is the object. This is very, very basic. The object is always the thing that is actually being done. So if I were to go steal a piece of gum from my friend, my object would be stealing the piece of gum. So whenever I'm asking you to identify the object, you're simply looking for what you have chosen to do. Another example might be you went to Sacred Heart to work in the clothes closet because you want to get into college. Your object in that scenario is working at Sacred Heart. Second component of any action is the intention. This is the why. Why are you performing this act? What is your motivation? Why are you doing it? So in the first example I gave you when I talked about the piece of bubble gum, let's say I had bad breath and I was going on a date. So the reason that I'm stealing the piece of bubble gum is because I want to impress someone I am dating. In the other example about going to Sacred Heart, your intention would be to get into college. So you can see that would be a very self-centered, self-motivating intention. So the object and intention, these are the two things we are always going to identify first. What are you doing and why are you doing it? In order for something to be morally good or morally praiseworthy, so to look at you and say, hey, what you did was really good, both the object and the intention have to be moral. In Catholic morality, you cannot have any discrepancy between what you're doing and why you're doing it. So let me give you a quick and very simple example. This is someone saying the following statement. I know you're not supposed to steal, but I wanted to give my mother something for her birthday. All right, so we have theft. So what's the object? So the first thing you want to say, I hope you just said it out loud, you screamed it so you scared your parents. Um, the object is stealing a birthday gift. So you always want to name it. You want to say what the person has done. And then the second question you want to ask is, is stealing moral or immoral? Well, so far, what do we know about moral principles? You could look at the Ten Commandments. You could point out the Seventh Commandment and say, you know, we, we have a basic principle that stealing is wrong. And then you want to explain why. Why is it wrong to steal? In a basic description that doesn't belong to the property, it could harm the owner. Look at the, the other person you may be harming for a response to this. Next, you want to name the intention. Why is this person stealing? Well, in this particular case, they want to express some kind of emotion to their mother. This is a good thing. Telling your mother happy birthday is uh, not immoral. You are not committing any kind of sin by doing that. So the intention here is moral, and you want to, again, explain why. You know, the expression of love, sympathy, etc. So we have an immoral object with a moral intention. So according to kind of Catholic moral teaching, overall the situation would be immoral. We could say that person has committed some type of sin. If you don't understand everything we've talked about so far, you probably want to stop and go back and review. All right, so once we have the object and intention down and settled, we can move on to a secondary 
component to the action. And this component looks at responsibility. How responsible would we hold someone for their actions? These are called circumstances. You will only look at circumstances after you have established whether the act is moral or immoral. And with the circumstances of an action, you're going to look at one of two things. You're going to look at the person performing the action. And you're going to consider things like their age, their economic status, do they have any kind of psychological disorder, how were they raised. So really take a good look at this person who did the act. So if we go back to our example about stealing a gift from mom for her birthday and looked at a circumstance about the person, think of some things that might affect their responsibility. Go ahead, say it out loud, scare the person who is sitting near you. You might come up with the idea that this person could be 45 years old. All right, so if a 45-year-old adult stole a present from mom for her birthday, we might hold that person pretty responsible for their act because they, at this stage in their life, should know better. If it was a four-year-old who stole something, we might want to lower the responsibility of their act because perhaps the four-year-old's moral compass is not fully formed. The next thing we want to do is look at the action of itself. So we want to take a look at what was done, what was the result of what was done. If it was something different, would that matter? So in this case, even our legal system recognizes something like this, the difference between first degree and second degree murder. First degree murder, right, it was planned out, it was intentional, it was really a thought out process. Second degree murder, not so much more crime of passion type things. So if we go back to the example, a little less serious about stealing a gift for mom, we can look closely at what was done. Would it have been different if it was something different? Let's say one person stole uh, some flowers for mom, another person stole a car. The Grand Theft Auto is clearly more serious than the stealing of some roses. What was the result of the action? Well, let's say you stole some flowers from a public park. You're not supposed to, but it doesn't cause a lot of harm. So that would matter in terms of responsibility. If you stole the car, let's say you stole it from someone who needed that automobile to go to work to provide for their family. That would make the act much more serious. Remember, these are secondary elements. They are not the core of an action. The only thing circumstances do is affect the level of moral responsibility. So you see some examples. If we have a child committing a serious crime versus an adult, you would hold the adult more responsible than the child. It can also affect how good or evil an act is. Cheating on homework is less serious than cheating on an exam. They're both immoral, they're both cheating, but one is clearly more serious than the other. Always remember, no matter how grave or outlandish circumstances can become, they'll never change an inherently immoral object into a good one. It only changes the responsibility of the person. So if you're looking at someone, to give you a really outlandish example, someone committing genocide, I don't care how old they might be, how young they might be, it's not going to make genocide a moral act. So that is uh, the, the lesson. We will be practicing many more examples in class. Go back and rewind if you need to review. If you want to see what your book has to say about this, it's found in Article 12 on pages 64 to 66. Have a good evening.